Well, first we have to normalize the load impedance. So we start at interface A, so A to A. We want to normalize it, so we take A to 3, our load, and divide it by A to 2, which is the impedance of our transmission line, or if we're going to make an analogy to our transmission lines. So we get 1.6, just a real number. So we find the circle for 1.6. And the imaginary part is zero, so we're going to be right along the horizontal axis. And we're going to label this as eta A. Next, we're going to rotate a distance D towards the generator, so in this direction. And we need to find D in terms of wavelength, so we're told D is 0.142 meters. So we're going to divide by the wavelength, that's eta, sorry, wavelength in the material 2. And that will give us 0.6 wavelengths. So if you remember, 0.5 wavelengths is all the way around the Smith chart. So we're actually going to go all the way around the Smith chart and then go another 0.1 wavelengths. And at the same radius from the center, this will be our eta B. I put lossless here just because we're dealing with a lossless slab. Later we'll see what happens when we have a lossy slab. So now we have a real and an imaginary part to our impedance. So we're going to read this off, and we have to denormalize it. So eta b d normalized is going to be equal to 1.02 minus j.48. That's from here. And we're going to multiply that by eta 2, which gives us 120. 0.9 minus J 56.9 ohms. Now, see if you can answer part B. Calculate the reflection coefficient at Z equals minus uh, D. So we just calculated the input impedance at this location, and so now see if you can calculate the reflection coefficient. This right here is what we want to calculate. 